Well, good morning there. This is Joe Van Cleve, and today we're going to do a fun little project. I'm going to show you from start to finish how I use these little film canister pinhole cameras with Harman's direct positive paper, and I'm going to show you the entire workflow from cutting the paper up, loading the camera, going out, exposing images, coming back and processing them, rinsing, drying, everything from start to finish, all in one shot. So stay tuned. Well, the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to cut our paper into the proper sizes. Now, I'm not working in actual darkroom condition. I'm going to leave the lights on and I'm going to just use a piece of cardstock to simulate it. But basically, we want to make a, a one and three quarter inch square uh, sheets of paper. And I, I will trim a one and three quarter inch wide uh, strip off my sheet my, my sheet of photo paper and then I'm going to slice it into one and three quarter inch sized individual pieces. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the camera and the paper will have a natural curl to it because it's fiber based paper and I'm going to here's the pinhole right here I'm going to put the paper opposite the pinhole emulsion side in and center it up like that right so pinhole is here papers here and then we simply put the cap on like that make sure the shutter is closed and there we go we're gonna load up with the other uh, eight uh, cameras the same way okay so what we're gonna need on our little photo excursion today we're gonna have our box of our nine pinhole cameras of course with the closing lid and a, a little rubber band to secure it, right? We have our little tripod plate and I'm going to be today using a mini handheld tabletop size tripod and of course we're going to need a light meter, that's how I usually work with pinholes, so there's my Gossin Luna Pro F and I want to make sure that the battery check does work all right, so we got a good battery, and I always like to take a notebook with me. I have one of these field notes notebooks so I can make my exposure notes for later on. Okay, we are ready to go. Let's go out and get some pinhole pictures made. Well, here we are driving up toward the Sandia Mountains, and we're going to go to an open space area known as the Elena Gallegos. Well, here we are up at the Elena Gallegos uh, open space area and the Sandia Mountains in the background. And I've chosen this little spot here. I got this little kind of a fence area. And I'm going to try to fit the little handheld tripod on top of this fence, maybe on the fence post or something, and see if I can take a photo. Well, this little handheld tripod is just a little bit too big to put up on this here wooden railing and make it work. But what I do have is the metal mounting plate with one of the pinhole cameras is sitting up on this little wooden bar and uh, I have the mountains in the background. And so I'm gonna set my light meter to make sure it's sitting at ISO 10 and I'm going to make sure the metering dome is on reflective and I'm gonna take a metering of the scene, zero the needle, and at opposite F128 is about eight seconds. So I'm gonna do an exposure of eight seconds on this camera. I have it kind of situated, pointing roughly toward the crest of the Sandia Mountains, maybe a little bit more. I'm gonna get this cactus in the shot, hopefully, and this uh, little dirt road. So the thing about taking landscape pictures with a pinhole camera with a really tiny image size, like one and three quarter inches, it's just kind of a problematic idea because you're not going to get the, all the detail of the landscape. It's just a tiny little picture. So. That's the thing to keep in mind when you're doing these small prints, is it's more about the overall shapes and forms of the image rather than the minute details. This isn't an Ansel Adams-esque kind of huge mural-sized image. It's only that big, slide-sized.
Well, here we are at the Kiwanis Overlook in the Elena Gallegos overlooking the Sandia Mountains in the distance and a kind of a wetlands area that's fed by streams from the Sandia Mountains. And there is this observation point, this uh, wildlife observation deck. So that last shot I did on the uh, the deck leading up to the the overlook here, <laughs> the camera, the shutter was pulled open, and I don't know if it happened just in the brief seconds after I opened the box or if it's been that way for a while. So um, I'm going to shoot another one of those and uh, just to make sure I got that shot. So sometimes these little problems happen with experimental cameras. So this is the overlook, the wetlands area, and if you pull it back, it's the view through one of these portal-like openings. And I'm going to set the camera, one of the cameras, right on the ledge here looking out. And like with that first shot, this little ledge is too small for that tripod to comfortably sit on, plus the opening is just too short. So I'm just setting the magnetic mount onto the, uh, the ledge itself, and we're going to take a picture that way. Okay, metering the scene, we're at ISO of 10. We point it out at the main part of the scene, push the button, zero the needle, and we got opposite F128, we're looking at about 10 seconds. And sometimes it's difficult to aim these cameras, but this guy right here, I'm going to try this weird shot of having it point almost straight up into this interesting ceiling work of the overlook structure and see what we can do here. I'm going to overexpose a little bit so I can maybe get some detail in the, the woodwork itself up there. So in order to meter this with a little bit of detail. I'm going to first take what the reading off the bright side of the wood and it says about you zero it, it says about eight seconds roughly and then taking a reading off the shadow side it says it's going to be about one minute or just under so I'm gonna have to guess here and say maybe about 30 second exposure. All right, so we are done with the last shot here at the Elena Gallegos open space area in the foothills of the Sandia Mountains. And we're gonna go home now and we're gonna unload these pictures, put them into our developing tank. We're going to mix up some chemicals and process them and see what we get.